how we should come and tell the majority how to change that perceived uh, fear that within a law system, happens to Australia in this case, another law system is trying to get in, but according to your lecture definitions and so forth, okay, the principles or the basis by which those things are being produced are not even legal within the Sharia or the Quran understanding. You, you come from a paradigm that is completely alien to me because I don't understand anything as a Quran understanding. There are thousands of texts that are commentaries on the Quran and they definitely do not all say the same thing. And there are schools of thought from the most esoteric to the most literalist. There is no Quran understanding. This is as untenable as saying the Torah understanding. And if someone says Torah understanding, you look at them as, what the heck are you talking about? Or the Talmudic understanding. According to what rabbinic school, and whether even Talmud is part of the tradition or not, the relevant interpretive tradition is itself an issue. So that constant turn off for me, this, this essentializing and insistence on dumbing down whatever is Islamic to its dumbest core elements is extremely problematic. Beyond that, I'm not sure which minority is telling the majority to live by its law. If there is a group that actually wants to impose Sharia law in the West, which is very absurd. I, mean, I have, in all the years I've been in... Within a system, you're trying to leave... You, you're, making, you're, you're making an assumption. You know, you no, remind me... I'm not making an assumption. No, no, you remind me of, of the works I read among Christian polemicists who said, Jews cannot be loyal to the crown because Jews are loyal to the kingdom of Jerusalem. Jews are loyal to the rabbis. Jews are loyal to Talmudic law. It was a cover for anti-Semitism, as this discourse is a cover for racism. That's all it is. Because I don't know any Muslim that wants to bring Sharia law and impose it upon the United States or Britain unless they're insane, unless they're actually mentally disturbed. They should be in a mental institute because now your argument is yes but no it's inherent in Sharia system that it dominates as that book uh, called the uh, that crazy report by team B Roman Romano 2 the threat of Sharia it says oh Muslims have a zimmatud attitude Muslims they look at non-Muslims and they don't see non-Muslims they don't see other human beings they see zimmis they just see big Z's on their foreheads and when they see Zimmis, they want to dominate them. That's the only way they can relate to Zimmatud. And of course it's based on that idiot Bar or whatever his book is, uh, that weird book. Well, and even when they talk about Islamophobia, it's not that Muslims are offended by the religious bigotry or racism. It is they don't expect a Zimmi to answer back. And so in the paradigm of Zimmatud, they want to silence the Zimmis. What is, this is a world of fantasy as ridiculous as the protocols of Zionist elders. It's a fantasy. It's a made up, constructed world that doesn't exist except in the minds of a few, few twisted Bin Ladens that either should be in prison or in a psychiatric institute. But for the vast majority of common Muslims who I know, and anyone in this tree, in, in this room who is a Muslim knows, it doesn't exist. Never will. For if you want to get technical, I get technical with you. The Hanafi school of law said Sharia does not apply outside the lands of Islam. Period. At all. Now, most Muslims that you know are Indo-Pakistani and so on are Hanafis. The Hanbalis, under Ibn Taymiyyah, he even argued for what one of my colleagues called the fatigue of divine norms. That we reach a point where Siyasa Sharia, government, Islamic government, Islamic rule, becomes irrelevant. Why? Because the age will become so corrupt, people will so be so corrupt, that they will no longer understand Islamic laws. So, what did Ibn Taymiyyah argue? That you live do your fasting, do your prayer, 
do your arms, beat on your wife, but not engage with outside society, not dominate anyone, not even attend a meeting with anyone, not have friends with anyone other than someone like yourself. Does, is, this a, is this a formula for domination and hegemony and zimitude and all that? It's insane. I mean, we call bigotry and racism by what it is. In the same way, those people who said Jews cannot be loyal to the king or to the royalty or to Germany or to England because they are fundamentally cannot be trusted with their loyalties, they are anti-Semites and bigots. And so are those who say the same thing about Muslims. And that's all I have to say about it.